Let's see. I think we should be live at this point. Let's see. <laughs> Very excited. Good timing. good timing. Yeah, good timing. Yeah, I think we're live. Yeah, absolutely. I see people already joining. Hi, everyone. Hi there. Um, welcome. Welcome. This is Anna and my guest, Lena. Hello. Hi. Yeah, um, guys, while you're tuning in, please uh, let me know if you can hear us, if you can see us, because we have prepared so much. We have so much to share and we want to start right away. Yeah, we're live. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, everyone. Uh, well, um, for those who are here, you probably know that English for IT is celebrating birthday. And uh, um, my slogan in life is give more than you receive. That's why instead of uh, getting presents from you guys, I decided, uh, we decided as a team to give you more. And I really appreciate um, our community and our guest, Lila, today for finding the time. Um, I know uh, you're super busy for finding the time uh, to come here and share your invaluable, priceless experience. Um, so thank you so much for that. I would like um, uh, to give uh, the floor to you, Lena. Um, could, could, you, could you please tell us about uh, a few things about yourself? Anything that you would like us to know? Okay. Uh, hi, guys. Don't overpromise that I will share some like a super, super insightful <laughs> things. <laughs> Don't I'm make me nervous more. from the beginning. <laughs> I was not nervous because before that introduction, but thank you so much. <laughs> so yeah, hi guys, I'm Lina. I'm uh, head of sales and uh, talent in Asamic. Uh, I'm working in a talent for more than 10 years. Uh, every day I'm still having a lot of interviews. My main uh, job is to make sure that we can have a fit between the uh, expectations from the candidates and the company, the business expectations. So um, have some experience already. So would be happy to share uh, today. Sorry if there will be a little bit of noise. I'm super busy, but today it was not a busy day. Today was a relaxing day and I had the diving. <laughs> so I'm in the diving center. Oh my God, I love me. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, this is what you get, guys, when you work in tech, right? And if you, of course, if you learn how to uh, manage your work, how to manage your tasks uh, wisely, wisely, you can enjoy life. Like this is this is a perfect example, Lena, of like what I like to say. Um, it, I, like there is no work-life balance. There is just life. And work is just that's part true. of your life. Yeah. So like, that's why I think uh, thinking like this doesn't make me stressed uh, so much, you know, because like, I don't think about nine to five jobs or, oh, this is my weekend. I cannot do anything. Yeah. Like, yeah 100%. You, just live. you just live. Absolutely. 100%. Today um, we had a funny story. So basically I was uh, finishing a diving and after the dive, I just grabbed my laptop and went on a high deck to do my work. And guys on the boat were joking that that's a real work-life balance. I love this. I love it. Well, I mean, probably you can share with our audience how to achieve this great work-life balance. But Hopefully. without further ado, I would like us to um, talk about how to nail a better job in tech. Because this is why we're here. Uh, you have... Um, more than 10 years of experience, of course, looking super young, just like me <laughs> having more than 10 years of experience. But uh, I know that you have worked with the uh, top Ukrainian startups that, yeah. um, you know, raised uh, millions of dollars, um, you know, of, of investment. And as far as I know, Asomic, did you guys also raise from... Um, um, yeah, ACC? from YC Combinator. Oh, from YC, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is amazing. So you work with the best talent and you definitely know what to do to nail the job so. interview. Yeah, and to land the job. Um, so, uh, yeah, guys, by the way, Osamic, you can check them out. Maybe they have uh, job openings. I don't know. Um, we have. Yeah, you can share You can share that as well as we go here. Sure. Um, yeah, so please check them out. Um, okay, so the first question that I have here is what do, as a recruiter, can you give us some insider information? What do you pay attention to when you choose the candidate that you want to talk to? 
you want to reach out, you want to, you know, send a message and speak with them. What do you, what is the most important that you pay attention to? That's a great question. Um, I will probably start from the one disclaimer that recruiter before deciding uh, will I talk to the candidate or not is spending reviewing CV not more than one minute. So it means that it's taking 40 seconds, 45 seconds to be sure, are we talking with this person or not? Um, what does it mean? It means that we have already like a neuron system in our brain. Uh, we reviewed like a thousand millions of CVs and LinkedIn profiles. So we know already what to check, what to look for in the profile before starting the, any sort of the conversation or making a reject. So have this, keep this in your mind that your CV needs to look good. And I think that we will talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, just look on your CV and your profile right now and check. Is it everything there that we can check in one minute? And if it's enough one minute to check your CV. Um, in terms of the things that we are checking uh, on the profile before making a decision, few things. First, uh, we are looking on the experience, right? The amount of experience. We are checking just like a numbers. This year started overall a career journey. This time, the last career. So we are just like checking, okay, that's a five years of experience in general, not the specific type of experience. Second thing, uh, job titles. Is any of the job titles is matching the job title that we are looking for? The, the job that we are looking for overall. Um, English level, most of the time, the English level of proficiency. Um, then we are going closer to the skills and maybe specific experience with the tools that we need to have. Um, other thing is location. We are working remotely. Most of the tech companies have a chance to work remotely, but anyway, um, Companies have required time zones that the candidate should be aligned with. So we are checking the location. So don't forget to add this to your profile because that can be the decision point here. Um, everything else will be already after we reaching out and decided that, yeah, let's look like a good profile, let's talk. Then the recruiter will spend up to 15 minutes to prepare to our conversation, like already the interview part. So uh, that's the like a highlight that we will probably uh, look for. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. Very, very valuable. I would just send a message to our chat, um, um, the view to the viewers. Take notes because this is going to be like really, really useful information for you later on whenever you are ready for your next job interview. Also, I just wanted to encourage questions. If you have questions as we go, feel free to share them in the chat. We will be addressing the questions, like I said, as we go or um, at the end of our talk. Uh, Lena, I have one question regarding the looks. I am just like you. I like when things look pretty. And I even took a, a, a graphic designer course back in the day when I just became an entrepreneur. And you know, that course, I mean, I thank myself every time when I need to create a quick banner for Facebook, for my Medium article. And, you know, I did the course uh, with the projector, the Odessa school. But back then it was in Odessa. Yeah. And uh, it was just one month. It was like $150 that I paid for that one month. But, it, oh, my God. I mean, that scale is it like a lot. and like forever. So my recommendation, guys, invest in your designer skills or um, I would definitely look into using canva.com when you're creating something to make it look pretty because they have templates already right or Lena is, do you have any recommendation for yes um, I have a note here um, don't over design your CV few reasons for that um, first one most of the companies most of the recruiters are using ATS systems that's like a CRM but just specifically for applicant tracking um, those CRMs are parsing the CV if it will be not in a type of the file that ATS can accept your CV can just get lost and your application will not even be in the system. So make sure that you are not overcomplicating, uh, not adding too much graphic and illustration details to the CV because then it will be too, um, 
too long, too complicated to read by the ATS. Other than that, everything just need to look simple. Um, everything need to be clear and all details highlighted. Just just structured, right? And make yeah, sure it your be fonts, your font, you have the same font size, you know, font style, yeah. And like, don't make, don't do and no typos, font. please. Yeah, <laughs> and no typos. Yeah, we have two questions. Let's take right. the questions right away here. Okay, the first questions here. Could you share what English levels companies ask for uh, different tech roles? Great question. I would rephrase that. Not for a different tech roles, but for a different tech companies. Uh, depends on the where the company is located or operated. Uh, then already we can move to the different type of the roles. So basically, if the company is uh, international and you will have a peers, colleagues, managers from the different location, then expect that English level, upper, intermediate, and higher will be expected for sure. If you are talking about the local teams, but the company that is operating internationally, then it can be intermediate. If you are talking about roles, depends how often you are interacting with the customers, because like in tech, everything is about the end users, right? Um, it's the customers that you you work for and creating the product for. So uh, if you are customer success any customer facing role, customer support, customer success, uh, marketing, sales, then English is required and it should be higher than upper intermediate. If you're looking for engineering, quality control, quality assurance role, um, operational role, finance uh, or others, uh, and you will have a local team, then English level can be not so high, like starting from the intermediate, but just accept that in tech, uh, without English, it will be like super challenging to find the role. Is it and possible though? That was will, my question. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible, but it was elementary or intermediate. It can be pre-intermediate, elementary never, uh, if pre-intermediate, <laughs> but um, you're cutting your career path. So you will not get promoted you will not get salary raise. Uh, you will just stuck till the time you will not improve your English. You will just stuck on the one role if you will have one. So in tech, English is the must. So just the different companies and the different type of roles require a different level of English. If you have like a specific role in your mind, uh, you can just highlight in the chat and then I will tell uh, more in details and explain for this specific role. But other than that, yeah, I hope I answered. Thank you. Starlight, feel free to tell us what your role is and what your level of English is. And Alina mm -hmm. will be able to yeah. uh, give, like, you know, um, have, have her say on this. Okay, we have another question. What is better um, uh, to have more experience or higher level of English? I think here, you know, the question is, uh, what is more important? Have uh, more experience in what you do okay. or level of English? Uh, I would highly recommend not to think overall that something is more important in terms of defining a job and going through the interview process. How the companies are evaluating you as a good candidate. They are checking equally your soft skills, your tech skills and experience, and all required things. There is never something, one, that is super highlighted. Even if you are talking about the entry-level job, where you don't need to have the experience. English level, uh, expectations can be different. Depends on the uh, on the company, as I mentioned before. So just um, just don't think. Stop thinking about that. The companies have a highlighted one or two skills that they are looking for or competencies. I don't know. Uh, it's never happening this way. So we have like when we are creating the role, uh, we are creating the job description. And the job description is just something that you can see on the job sites, right? On or on the career page. But that's just the top of the iceberg. Actually, we are creating the job specification that is including. It's included soft skills, like you need to have a time management on a high level. You need to be responsive to critique 
or um, be transparent and show this on your previous experience. Uh, have a good, um, straightforward communication if it's required by the company. From the other hand, we will have a list of technical skills that we want you to have. It will include the level of English. It will, it will include the proficiency of working with the specific tools or the previous, previous background and experience, like working with the B2B companies or something like that. So it's always the complex or the variety of different things that we are checking. Never just the one thing that is more more valuable or uh, more checked than another. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so uh, we have a starlight uh, telling us that, for example, for software engineer, is it okay uh, to have intermediate level or do we need advanced level? I think you partially answered this question. Yeah, it depends on yeah. the it depends on the, on the on the project and what you're gonna do. Would you yeah. like? To I will add. Yeah, I will. I will highlight a few more things. So basically, it depends on the type of the company. You now, in this case, so if you will be working for the outsource company, so that's the vendor for the real company that is doing the product, then you will have someone who will be making the major communication. Um, so then you can have like the intermediate level is accepted. If you want to work directly in a product company like a Spotify, Somic, Facebook, Google, then the level of English even for engineer uh, will be at least upper intermediate, I think even native fluent because uh, other engineers will be speaking just English. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, let's move on to the next question here. And the next question, we are talking about LinkedIn profiles. Uh, well, first of all, um, is this really crucial? Crucial means important. Is this really crucial for a tech professional to have a LinkedIn profile, Alina? Yeah, I'm just reading the comments uh, that I have an Indian or Russian accent. Nice to hear that. Thank you, guys. Um, uh, so basically about the LinkedIn profile, it's crucial. Uh, it's not just important. We are always checking the LinkedIn. Um, if you are not even mentioned to the LinkedIn in your CV, we will go and check it. Um, what, we are, what makes sense to add to the LinkedIn profile? more details that you are adding to the CV. So it can be as extension to the CV. Why? Because CV should have just the one page. In so what are, the, what are the top mistakes that you would point out uh, on, your link, on the LinkedIn profile or they're not really important? Like for me, for example, when let's say someone wants to connect with me on LinkedIn and they don't have a profile picture, I like, I really don't want to, um, you know, connect with them because like if the person cannot think to have a proper LinkedIn page with at least a, a profile picture and a proper description of what they do, like their job, I don't think this person should be in my network because you guys should remember your network is your net worth, right? And people who are in your network, they technically, what is it? What, what's the cheesy phrase? Like five people in your network, this is, yeah, this is what you actually are. Um, which is actually true because, you know, so what, what about you, uh, Lena? Like for me, these basic things are like definitely no, like I don't want to deal with you. Yeah, no one will add you to you to the network, to the professional network if you will not have the visible profile it means that you will not have the picture uh photo uh if you will not have a summary that is telling what you are doing here and what you're looking for or how you can help other people um same with the descriptions of the previous job experience so you need to add more information about what were you doing on these jobs uh what were you responsible for what achievements you had uh so all this information needs to be there um one of the biggest mistakes for people that had the previous experience but not related to the new career path that they decided to have is not to ask for recommendations and not to have the uh, recommendations added to the LinkedIn profile. Um, other than that, I think uh, that LinkedIn is doing a good job with the onboarding you and highlighting what you need to add to your profile to make it more visible. Um, 
just don't experiment with the job titles because then you will be not searchable no one will find you or people will be just confused about uh, are you yeah. the match for any of the roles and uh, don't add like too much details that are not relevant uh, yeah. if you're if you you need to highlight the things but not just like tell all your story of your life. Basically. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. But um, also another thing with the LinkedIn, uh, I see that some people say that uh, I don't have LinkedIn. I highly recommend that you guys create uh, your LinkedIn profile, especially if you're in tech, especially if you're looking to find a job at an international company. Because for example, for, uh, for uh, Western Europe for the United States, LinkedIn is a go-to platform whenever people want to know about your professional life. Yeah, when we think about Instagram, it's all your personal life. I want to know your personal life. I'm going to go uh, on Instagram, but like I, if I want to know about your professional skills, I'm going to go on LinkedIn. Um, and that that is why LinkedIn is important. Um, but we have a good question that I want to bring up right away here. Uh, by the way, thanks everyone for interesting questions. What are soft skills uh, that are, uh, what soft skills are the most important to have for junior specialists? Yeah, I would like us to talk a little bit about junior specialists because I know a lot of people are switching their careers, just starting out in tech and soft skills are important for them even more than hard skills because at this point they can't boast, they can't like uh, say a lot about their previous uh, experience because they just started out. So Lena, I would love to hear your say on this one. Um, it's a challenging to add your uh, soft skills properly to your CV or LinkedIn profile. That's true. Ask for help. That's why there is a lot of uh, uh, consultants uh, who are doing that just for free and helping you to set up your profile or set up your CV properly because it's hard to like operate with the soft skills if you're are not sure about there's a lot of free information too i shared a few videos yeah. on my youtube channel you can just start with yeah. that like some basic information and then turn to a consultant yeah so uh i would say the few uh skills that are must have in case you're junior let's start on what is junior junior means that you have already some sort of commercial experience but this commercial experience is less than the one here if you don't have any commercial experience in this field, then you're trainee. So let's start from here. The question is about when junior. you say, uh, sorry to interrupt. When you say commercial experience, could you explain uh, to our audience what do you mean by commercial experience? Yeah, when I'm saying about the commercial experience, it means that you received the salary for that. You actually yeah. were paid for doing this job. So technically, when you are doing a coding boot camp and you are creating a, a project for the coding boot camp, nobody pays you for the project. It's non-commercial experience, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if yeah. you are talking, if you say that I have non-commercial experience, then you can be hired for a trainee position or an intern position. Is that, is yes, that that's right? True. Okay, that's awesome. true. Yeah, that's not a junior. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, if you're talking about the, the soft skills that are the most important for a junior specialist, first, eager to learn and uh, your learning abilities. All of us have a different learning abilities, so it's important to know how fast you can learn the new things, how you can accept the new information, process it, and uh, show results. Um, so what you can do here, you can highlight your pet projects, some, as you say, like the non-commercial projects that you were involved into and share some results. So I started doing a coding with knowing like a zero, less than zero about programming overall. And uh, in the two months, I had a prototype of the mobile app. And that is the link to the, this app. That's impressive. That's a good showing of your soft skills. Are you talking it's about your that... your learning experience or somebody else's with the mobile? Else. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I just I just saw the a mobile app. 
yeah so basically i just saw that in a one cv um okay. not a long time ago so yeah it, it just like was on top of my mind so this uh, is so learning was in the cv right so the person yeah, sure. included it just to show that's actually a very good example how you can showcase in your cv with the help of like a real situation modeling uh talking about the real situation to to uh to show the person to show the recruiter how fast you can learn because like if you say okay i am a fast learner this phrase does not mean anything anybody can say i'm a fast That's learner not. but if you include an example of something that you learned and you think you learned it fast like this one for example that's impressive and you see uh, lena still remembers it it stays in somebody else's head so use examples whenever you want to talk about your experience it's the best if you use examples of real things real situations real things you built or real situations where you performed in certain way very good example thank you you know i, I mean yeah, I, i'm taking notes it's gonna be in my twitter guys i'm gonna post it on twitter all the way perfect <laughs> Uh, the other thing, so uh, you don't have the relevant experience. So eager to learn and fast learning, that's a huge skill. That, for example, I have two candidates, two junior specialists for the same role. If one of them showed me some results that improved the soft skill that they can learn fast, this one will be in the leading position through the hiring process. Second thing is a uh, proactive attitude, because when you're junior, you need to ask a lot of questions. You need to be, to be asking everyone about everything, understand that there is not like stupid question. It just not exist. And it can easily be identified on the interview by amount of questions you're asking how smart questions are, how good they were built and set up uh, through the interview process. Same with uh, um, highlighting those skills in a CV. Um, tell the story, build the case when you needed to find out something and how you used the information and the resources that you had to make it happen. That's awesome. By the way, just a quick uh, uh, note here. This uh, question about soft skills is not only relevant to junior specialists. Regardless, yeah. your junior, middle, or senior specialist, if you, it's important to show uh, the company the level of soft skills. So all this information that we are discussing right now, it is relevant for all types. For seasoned, seasoned means. Uh, um, with experience, yeah, experience, seasoned professionals and junior professionals. Um, and by the way, speaking of uh, Alina, what, whatever you just said, I second every word of you just said, because this is what I also uh, try to focus on in every course that I create for our community. Uh, learning fast, uh, proactive attitude. I love this and asking questions. You you can't believe how much effort I put into telling people and explaining why asking questions is important because of like the majority of our community is of course Ukrainian. And for our culture of communication, we are more reserved than let's say Americans, right? And uh, however, when you communicate on international arena, uh, people don't think about your culture. They just hear you're speaking English, asking questions, and you're like acting, you know, in situations. That is why I tell um, everyone in our community, you have to have questions ready. Ask questions. You have to show curiosity. You have to become curious because the more curious you are, the more you learn, the faster you learn, more questions you ask, more proactive you become, and more successful you eventually become in your career. So this is very, very valuable. Um, I have another interesting question that relates to junior. Sure. And so let's uh, take this one as well. Um, I'm actually also curious to learn your opinion here. Is it true that junior positions are much less in demand than before the war in Ukraine? And um, yeah, so how can you be competitive as a junior? I would say that uh, junior, uh, junior positions are less, not uh, just while war started uh, overall since the beginning of this year and since the end of the previous year. Um, the reason behind that is just a shift in the uh, talent market in Ukraine that was caused by a huge amount of schools that was producing a lot of uh, 
non-experienced junior trainee specialist. So the market was just overloaded with the amount of people and the companies didn't change. The, the amount of companies didn't grow uh, much. So the situation happened before war. Uh, with the war, it didn't change. Um, first three months, the amount of open jobs was less, right? It's uh, decreased because like that's normal. Uh, the companies uh, were thinking what to do with the business. Hiring was not the highest priority. But in the three months after the war started, the company have the same amount of open roles that they had before uh, a year ago. So I would not say that uh, junior roles right now is more complicated to find as like the same as the middle roles or the same as the senior roles. Uh, their amount is the same that was. So don't think that uh, it's a more competitive market right now. Um, and again, I just want to mention that market would always be competitive if you will have just two candidates, two people, two specialists on the market and one job it's already a huge competition. So you just don't need to think about competition. Be aware that the market is competitive, but be sure about how you can sell yourself and your skills. And uh, that is enough jobs to everyone. Junior roles, it's enough. It's enough in outsourced companies that are cutting right now so, uh, resources and expenses. So they are willing to hire people for a less salary but that can train fast and do the job. Because the second thing happened, the crisis happened, right? So the company, you maybe saw the amount of layoffs that happened in a huge companies, like a, like a mask companies or like Twitter. Um, and uh, this is because of the crisis, not because of other things. So right now, it's different situation. You have more chances than you had before to get the job. I because, love it. Yeah, because yeah, because right yeah, now the so market is also. I would say when I love, I really loved it, uh, Lena, when you said that. Uh, don't think about competition. The only thing, uh, the only competition you should think about is yourself. Yesterday. <laughs> yeah, compete with yourself yesterday. So uh, I would. You like need to tweet this also. I will do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will create the whole thread about our uh, our uh, talk here. So I want everyone now who's watching this answer in the comments. What did you do today to be a better version of yourself compared to yesterday? I think this is kind of an easy question because you're watching us, so you're learning everything. Yeah, but yeah, that that would be that would be very uh, very good question to ask yourself actually daily, because uh, every day we have to do something to become better. And if you think about your career, what did you learn today? How fast did you learn? Now you have to think about how fast you learned it. Yeah, what resources did you use? Did you do it yourself or you ask for help? For example, I am. Um, had um, um, uh, the, uh, recently I had a, a job interview with uh, a candidate and uh, we um, had gave them the test task, uh, the mock task. And uh, instead of doing their own research, the candidate kept asking my managers questions like, okay, can you tell me how to do this? Can you tell me how to do this? I was like, well, this is great. I don't mind teaching people, but you have to take care of your learning. Yeah. Of your uh, learning new things yourself. Yourself. And then if there is like, you know, something that you really can't figure figure out, you know, when when uh, the company gives you a mock task and tells you, like, let me know if you have any questions. This is a cliche phrase and it doesn't mean you have to really <laughs> you don't need to ask questions. Please don't ask questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even I, I would comment here that even my team right now, I have 17, 17 people in uh, that I'm managing directly. And uh, if someone is asking me the question that. Could we just Google it? I will probably ignore it. I will not respond till the person will figure out that it can be Googled and ask a more specific question that they didn't find. Let's give, let's give uh, this answer to everyone. It's not, can I Google it? It's, you must Google it without any Before. questions. Uh, you must go to stack, you must stack overflow it without any questions. You must like, you know, I when I worked as a project manager for this IT consultancy six years ago, and I was conducting job interviews with my boss, it was a startup, very small startup. And, uh, 
um, uh, he was actually asking people, would you Google this? Or how would you Google this? He was like, I don't need to people to pretend that they don't Google or they don't look up the, you know, the information. I want to know exactly that they do it and that they do it properly. All right, let's move to the next question. It's about the CV. And we already have a few questions about CVs in the chat. So I yeah. think it will be interesting to discuss. So comment. So we, we have already covered uh, CVs and common mistakes. Yeah, we talked about the design um, at the beginning of our talk here, that it has to be clear. Uh, so what else would you recommend uh, paying attention to or mistakes to avoid when preparing your CV? I would say a few things. First, uh, you don't need to add the photo if you don't want to. And most of the time, it's better not to add it because in a lot of companies from US, it's forbidden to have uh, in a CV the super personal information or information that can identify your gender. So then the recruiter will need to do additional job and remove the picture from your CV, what is not nice. Um, Second, you don't need to add your full address. Uh, I will not go to your house to conduct the interview, so you don't need to do that. Um, other thing is that if you want to add your hobby, you can, but just in case, you are actually planning to use it for the conversation. Like if you're planning to use this for the ice breaking question or the first like a chat minutes of the building report, building, building report, right? Uh, interview part. Uh, other than that, it's not required uh, to add this and it's taking a ton of space in your CV. In other words, it's not relevant. Do not include not. irrelevant information that is irrelevant to your to your position or to the job that you are applying for. It's a good idea to talk about your hobby. It is if it is related, for example, um, to the project that you might be hired for. Let's say you're gonna build an app for camping site or something, and you are an avid camper. That's yes. amazing. I would love to have a software engineer who's been like doing camping all his life. Life or all their life, yeah, and now they can be involved and in contributing to uh, building the app like this. So yeah, make it relevant, as much relevant as possible. Yes, please. Uh, other thing, uh, no need to add that you are a quick learner, that you are good in communication, you have a management skills, or uh, other just uh, random phrases, words that you think can look good in your CV. Because as I mentioned before, if you have something like that that you want to highlight, highlight with a proof. Highlight with a explanation. Give when it, give you, it a yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, so it's just taking uh, a lot of space on your CV. Other thing, that's my... That's a huge pain when you're looking on a CV. Some sort of the stars, ratings, or leveling that the, the candidate decided to come up with. I know that a lot of templates have this included, but just realize that me as a person, I'm looking on a CV and that is like a, a English and just like a five stars or a four stars or a three stars. I have no idea what it means. I will just skip this part. And probably I will, if I have someone who mentioned the proper level of English, that will be the person that will come to the interview uh, and the next stage. So don't play with the design too much, as I mentioned, and uh, don't create your own rating or scoring or something like this. That's the company part. Uh, just just share your overall experience with, uh, uh, with them. With them. That's uh, awesome. CV. So how long should the CV be? Because that's like the question everyone wants to know. Is it one page, two pages, one and a half, three pages? What's your say? One page, not more one than page. a white page. Uh, I can I can send you, but actually you can just Google. Hello again about that. Uh, so even a CV of a founders of the Twitter, Google, WhatsApp, ever are taking one page. So I think that you can handle to have a one page uh, CV. Lena, um, right away. Those people can. Sorry, right away. This question. 
uh, yeah, so why uh, everybody says it's one or two pages, it's actually one page, but once I provided uh, such a CV and every HR asked me for additionally um, detailed CV. So as far as I understand, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That's an amazing question. And the answer is that your CV was not relevant. And the information that was on this one page was just not the one that uh, HR actually needed to check before deciding on your profile. It means that probably you didn't have enough of proofs of your skills and expertise and experience to make sure what the next step will be. So it's not about the length of your CV. It's about the content of your CV. So here, just revisit your CV. Just look on that and think and check what actually additional in details and information each are asked. And that's a good sign to update the CV with this additional information and maybe change with something that don't need to be in the CV overall. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and let's move on to uh, the, okay, I have one more question about CV. So when I um, teach this lesson on CV um, as part of the course, I uh, usually highlight the, the fact that at the beginning of the CV, you have that like description where you um, uh, write three or two sentences. Like it's it's like uh, it's sort of like small talk in your CV where you actually address exactly the recruiter and the company, right? And I tell my audience that I tell students that uh, this part of your CV uh, has to be changed based on the company you're applying for because you cannot recycle the same CV for every single company for. Every single position you're applying for, and that's why what I say you don't have to change everything completely. You can have you can build a good skeleton of your CV, but you definitely should change that introduction. Th those like three sentences where you um, sort of like reach out to the recruiter of this particular company and tell and highlight something that you want them to notice right away. Uh, what's your say on this one? Uh, is is that the right you know track here or not? Uh, I have a different uh, opinion. I think that uh, those things, the highlight uh, and the summary uh, should be in a cover letter because no, if you send the application, no one will open the CV and check this information if there was nothing that made me feel that I need to check this. So if the candidate didn't make the effort and didn't add any information to the like a head of the email um, uh, or to the application form uh, why i should make an effort and open the cv that's not i'm saying because i'm arrogant that's i'm saying as the uh, person that see how the other like the founders of the company or a big companies are making the decisions it just is like that just imagine that in a day, you like you are, as a recruiter receive a thousand of emails, and uh, you will not open each of them. You will decide how to prioritize your time, and spend the time on those who are more relevant for you right now. So that's why adding all this information to the summary part, to the email, and uh, or to the application form is more important than manually changing your CV from time to time. Because again, you can forget. And I saw this amount of mistakes when someone sent it and addressed to our company, the CV where the header and the summary was like, hello, Makpo, I'm super happy to apply to your company. That is my dream job. And my reply was, okay, go to the Makpo because it's the oh my God, this job. Is, I will not I waste mean, uh, our time. Real. Epic fail. So yeah, so yeah, I would I would uh, recommend to stick with the CV. Uh, then, like less human mistake can happen, mm -hmm. but change the cover letter, create the cover letter. Um, so and, guys, cover letter is also important. Yeah, yes. learn how to write cover letters. Yeah. Uh, one more advice for people who are switchers, for people who are changing their career path, uh, is that you can create a few CVs. And uh, what you can do, you can just check the job descriptions from the companies that you like, 
from the jobs that you like and rewrite your CV, including the things that you have that were highlighted in the job description. So if you are not sure that you want to be the junior product manager or junior project manager, or you're not sure that you will be good in a customer success or a customer support role, right? They are like close to each other, but they are different in a, like skills that uh, you need to show. Then create a few CV that have a different job titles and the different information that is more related to some specific job but other than that just use the cover letter amazing amazing thank you so much so one more thing for you uh, people to learn to do write a good cover letter uh okay we have another question about cv should should we add english certificates to cv should i just or just mention that i have a certification and uh not edit i, I think you mean like attaching or something i think so uh so basically you can you can just attach a link so it will not take a space, but I would check the job description. <laughs> and if in the job description, the English certification is required, then you just need to attach it with the CV as a separate file. If it's just the requirements in some sort of English level, then you can just stick to the, my English level is this, this, and the certification, I have a certification, this and that. Uh, don't need to attach to everything. Again, the reason for that is not because like we are lazy, we will not check this, because of the ATS. So you will never be sure that the system through which you're applying will recognize that that's an additional file and not submit just a certificate without the CV. And then you will just lose a chance to apply for the job because you cannot make a second uh, application because it will be already like the double profile and it will be not counting and a lot of technical issues. So just as simple as possible, not overthink. <laughs> CV should be simple, but super informative. Um, so yeah, just in the case that certificate is required, you're adding it. Yeah, but you you can just like add a link, I would guess, because um, uh, yeah, yeah, link really, can work. Yeah, just really separate document would not be uh, uh, too much needed here. I want to take another question about job interview, guys, uh, and uh, uh, we will be wrapping up soon, so I want to have enough time to cover one more topic. Uh, we have already talked about LinkedIn profile. We talked about a CV. We even talked about cover letter. I don't think it was on the agenda, but we mentioned that. Um, by the way, all these uh, three topics I cover in my video uh, videos on YouTube, and also if you are taking the course right now, you will have separate lessons where I also expand on uh, how to create professional CVs, LinkedIn profile, and cover letter, all the details. Uh, let's talk about job interview questions. Another big, um, you know, chunk of information here about the tricky job interview questions. And generally, Lena, I, would, I don't want us to be really um, just uh, focused uh, on this question. I want you to tell us the things, the top things that we need to take into account when preparing for a job interview, yeah, when preparing for answering the questions and going to a job interview. I know you have a lot of useful things to say on this one. Yeah, thank you for that. The person whose uh, ears are bleeding, I'm so sorry for you, you can disconnect. Um, so, uh, okay, sorry, sorry, guys, please, uh, uh, if this information is not relevant, you can, uh, you feel free to go and uh, uh, we are here volunteering, sharing with you valuable information. Uh, please show respect. And uh, for every hate comment, I curse your English. You will never, ever become upper intermediate. Let's go, Lena. <laughs> You're so badass. Um, yeah, okay. So about the job interview questions, you just need to be aware that the company have a strict uh, interview plan uh, and the interview process, everyone is aware on which stage of the interview, what we need to cover, what kind of questions we need to ask, what topics we need to uh, check. 
So basically, uh, interview uh, preparation, that's a huge deal for the company and it should be for you as well. Um, because recruiter or anyone who is uh, involved into hiring will be prepared. Um, so about the questions, uh, there is a lot of information uh, that uh, you can find online. Again, you can Google uh, how to answer questions about, uh, I don't know, about your job experience or whatsoever. Um, I would say that don't forget that the companies are smart. They are doing your uh, homework. And uh, they are preparing the question that probably are not super obvious or you cannot Google to make sure that you, you are ready to answer honest without the preparation and your no side notes or something like that. Uh, as an example, I would probably say that uh, that is a typical question that the companies are asking about the weaknesses. Like, what, is your, what are your weaknesses, right? And uh, what, the, what the tricky question is that the companies, and I'm asking this question also, I would probably ask you if you would have a chance not to work, but improve some of your skills, what you would improve during the year timeline, right? I'm still asking about your weaknesses because you will say probably about something that you think you are not good at. So I will receive the same answer, but I will not ask the cliche question that you prepared for and how our brain is working if you feel hear something that is unusual you started actively listening and starting like acting as a normal person not the robot that learned the answer so that's a kind of the tricky questions that you need to be aware of uh i would probably say that the other is about um where do you see in five years yourself in five years you know that's what is another question that's a meme but still, a lot of companies are asking. Yeah, this I just want to say, like, all these questions, you know, tell me about yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What do you see yourself in five years? I mean, they are still, like, used a lot because, you know, you cannot, we, like, we, we not, you know, there are different people. There are different recruiters. There are different HR managers, you know. People just get used to cliche things. So it's not that uh, you will never get these questions at the job interview. It's just like you should be prepared that people may ask you the same questions in different words. That's why you always use your common sense. Yeah, always think. Don't be like a robot. That's why I never recommend, uh, you know, memorizing uh, phrases, uh, like to, you know, memorizing answers to typical job interview questions because then you are just like a robot and like you uh, deprive yourself of a ability to think and uh, to you know um, brainstorm or decide on the spot as they say right so that's that's yeah. that's more important and uh, as I like to say um, you have to be also honest you know and even if you don't know something you can just be honest say so but based on the question, based on the situation, don't just say like, I don't know. Yeah, try to respond with dignity, try to, to say, try to show I would that. even, mm -hmm. sorry for, uh, I, I just, uh, I would even say that if you don't know, just say don't know. But being honest is super important because recruiters have like uh, 10 interviews per day. And uh, I definitely know who is bullshitting me. I definitely know who is not saying the truth. I definitely see when someone is answering not honestly to the question or just try to answer based on uh, how I would like them to answer. So just, again, just don't, don't try to play the games that you will not win because <laughs> the result will be on the side of the recruiter to decide. And if recruiter were... I'm yeah. uh, not sure uh, about how honest you were in the interview. Uh, come on. For, the only for, one question, the, the, the one more note on this, the only one question that you can act and need to prepare for, and uh, you need to have an answer in your mind, is just about you. Tell me about yourself. Everyone will ask you that on yeah. each stage of interview. So if you're interviewing for the same, the Google, where they have the 10 stages of the interview, everyone, every person, every new person will ask the same question. Tell me about yourself. Maybe with the different words, but the context will be the same. They want to hear about you. So that's the question that you need to prepare 
be prepared and, for. And that's and actually that's like a pitching. That's like a pitching your startup. That's mm -hmm. like a pitching your idea. That's like uh, telling about your dream or about your personal values or like something like that. That's something that you need to have the answer and you need to be passionate about this answer and uh, you need to tell the story, like pitch this answer. Everything else, just listen actively. Don't overthink and don't try to, we all have a problems with the active listening. That's, that's true. That's how the human being is built. So when someone is talking, you're trying to come up with the ideas what you would respond or already thinking about your answer before the someone finished the question and the tricky point is that most of the context of the questions is at the end of the question so don't forget to actively listen and understand like make the pause like a stop for a second and try to understand what i actually want to find out if i ask you this question and just then answer be strategic just remember yeah, be strategic. Very, very cool. Yeah. Um, and another thing that I wanted to add here, um, it, you know, when about the questions about the pitching, pitching part. Yeah, this is probably your top priority right now. If you don't have your personal elevator pitch prepared when like if you can't, if you're thinking what to say when you meet someone for the first time and they ask you, so tell me about yourself. You have to really this is the first thing you have to work on. And uh, yeah, so that's that's something that everyone has to learn. Like I, I like saying that Americans, I feel like Americans are born with the ability to pitch themselves because I have never I've never met an American who cannot like, you know, very fluently, openly, without any like stress, talk about themselves, like pitch themselves. That's why I mean, if uh, and again, like, that's a, that's a skill. That's a skill. Every yeah. skill you need to practice to you gain to one to gain one new skill. You need to learn and practice at least for one year so just in the u.s it's so natural because from the kindergarten they are teaching them how to pitch they are making a presentation my yeah. my nephew made the presentation he was five years old he made the presentation why he need a cat and it was in five years right now if i ask anyone from my friends from ukraine that are adult to pitch something or create the presentation, it can be a challenge because that's not something that we are practicing often. So challenge. just be aware about that and know that that can be a challenge for you to present yourself in the best way possible. And that's the that's the goal for the interview, at least for the first one. <laughs> to go I've, through the whole process, you need to like to go to the, get to the big boss. You need to go through the recruiter. So make sure that you have the speeching you prepared this answer to like just past the recruiting stage of the you, you know lena you just inspired me to add a extra task to my new course release uh just like to have people pre pre uh, create a presentation and work on their uh both powerpoint skills and uh, yeah. you know public speaking skills so shout out to you i sure. love I will link them as well. We have time for one last question. And this is a question to you personally. If I am applying for a job with you and you're interviewing me, what is the good question that I can ask you as an interviewee? Great question. Um, you need to ask a few questions. First, you need to overall be interested. Even if you are not interested and you just want to get the job, look interested look excited create the questions that show that you are not just looking for the money you're interested in the, what environment you will be working with so a uh, few topics that you need to come up with the questions for first one you your personality your personal attitude and your personal uh, values uh, check is the company aligning with your values if you don't like a straightforward attitude or you don't like to work with the bullies or you don't like when there is a micromanagement or you don't like if the company don't have a transparency and direct feedback. So you know that because that's how you behaving, how you are acting and you want to be comfy in the work because you're spending a hell of a time there. So um, prepare the question one or, one or two that is based on how you would like to receive information, to have the environment, to have the manager, what you expecting from work. And ask, typically you can ask like, 
who will be my manager, what you can tell me about this person, what you can highlight uh, like as an instruction, how to communicate with this person. Um, you can ask about um, like how the performance review process in the company look like, how often it's happening. Uh, you can ask about the recognition process in the company, how you're recognizing person achievements, uh, how you are recognizing the task that was done, uh, how you're planning, how I will know that my goals, I'm hitting my goals, how I will know that I'm doing a good job, how the feedback looks like in the company. So that's everything that is important for you to know before deciding, because again, that's not interview. It's not just about the, the company deciding about you. It's about you deciding about the company. So don't forget about that. And you are also making the interview for the company <laughs> and for a specific recruiter is me, right? Um, so challenge them. Uh, second part is a team. What is the environment in the team? What happened with the previous person on this role? Or is this, a, is this the new role? Why this role is open if it's a new role? And uh, how the team collaboration and communication is happening? What are the, the time zones? Uh, how you're working? How you're planning the work together with the team? What are the highlights about the team? Are you jokers? Are you the, like, do you have a meme chat? Uh, how you're communicating? Do you have a random Slack or whatsoever? So ask about the team to understand who you will closely working with as a peers. And the third part, third block, always ask about the company overall. What is the mission of the company? How successful the company is right now? Do they have enough money and how they are feeling? <laughs> Will they pay you for a lot of time? <laughs> Just uh, make sure that you know and ask the question, who are the founders? Uh, who is the top management? How the decisions in the company are made? Uh, so that's a three bullet points on which you can create the questions about personal for you as a personality, what's important that's aligned with your personal values. Second is about the environment with about your team peers and manager and the third one is about the company overall uh speaking of what to ask in hr and how to ask how to politely ask about the level of compensation the benefit package equity uh, stock like equity in the company sign on bonus and other things is there is this a problem though it feels like I don't think it's a problem to ask about these things but is this something that is not polite it can be not polite no, it's super polite because you are not working for anything else than money, benefits, package, equity, stocks, and bonuses. So they're not going to judge you if you want free coffee in the uh, office. <laughs> I think that they, they're not supposed to judge you because uh, you're looking for a work to survive and eat and have a proper basic, environment. Basic things, That's yeah. the basic stuff. So it's super polite. You need to ask that and not just the HR. Ask on each stage of the interview, but just a different. Divide this into the parts. And again, you will get to the big boss, the founders or decision maker, right? The major person who will say yes or no. So just divide those questions to the different stages of interview. What is the most important for you to find out from the HR is just level of compensation, actually, right? So then you understand you want to move forward with this company or no, that's like that's not enough for you. That's not the option for you. So you will not waste your time. On the next stage, if you will be talking to the manager or your peer, ask about the bonuses, ask about what benefits they have. And when you are coming to the final interview, that's the time to ask about signing bonus. That's the time to ask about the equity and stocks. When you already are talking about them making a decision on you, and about the finalizing the interview process. So just like be smart and divide this into the view question to not look pushy, like from the beginning that you are, that that's your major target. Don't make it look like that. Everyone knows that that's a major target for all of us. We are not just like, really, we're working to have money. That's normal thing. Everything else is the second part, like a values company, blah, blah, blah. That's the second it. thing. We are working to have money and everyone is understanding that uh, we are on the same page with the, all HRs, all hiring managers, everyone. But just be smart, play this game uh, mm -hmm. and uh, make a nice communication that makes sense. It doesn't make sense to ask HR about signing bonus when it's just the first iteration mm -hmm. and the first interview and no one knows 
are you when worth are you the sign-on bonus? Wherever they want to pay for you the sign-in bonus or stock options, that like that's a high level things. So yeah. start with the simple things. Ask each other about the level of compensation or the benefits. And uh, then decision making will move forward with the interview processes and the levels of the interview. Lena, amazing. It's, not, it's polite. It's polite to ask about money amazing. from the beginning. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the question. Very, very good question and an excellent answer. I couldn't, I couldn't answer this question, to be honest. And like somebody said in the comments today uh, that uh, we had really difficult questions and Lena, you had really easy answers. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Let me uh, put us back here on on the screen thank you so much for your time and uh, i appreciate all the sharing um and uh, i hope to have you back actually to share more i know it's really difficult i remember last time we had an interview with you um two years ago and it was the same situation i totally loved it it was mind-blowing but like you're so busy so hopefully i can uh, catch you one more time and uh, we do another uh, webinar here uh, to share your knowledge and to help people because here this is guys for you technically uh, to get better at what you do to be able to find the job uh, faster and also we are our mission here i think uh, lena i can speak for you as well our mission here is to bring up to grow amazing tech talent and especially for our country ukraine i want ukrainian tech talent to be well known in the world good english that's why i'm doing what i'm doing my mission excellent english excellent soft skills no stupid mistake mistakes in your cvs in your you know linkedin profile i want uh, the you we every ukrainian is a brand for the country and whatever we're doing here investing our time energy and everything this is to build the brand of the country through our personal brand so thank you so much lena thank That's you guys. Right. thank you so much i it was a pleasure thank you for great questions i enjoyed uh, the conversation so much but i was speaking most of the time but <laughs> i enjoyed the, reading the chat and uh, yeah i would happy to join when you will invite i think that interview topic that's something that cannot be covered within the yeah. even one hour and uh, it required a lot of things to go through the different types of the questions how to respond specific type of the question methodologies and all these things so yeah i would be happy to join another webinar if you will have soon absolutely look what we have uh, a value just so much value in one hour this is how uh, english for it works this is how english for <laughs> it works all right bye for now everyone